Hundreds of children in Ghana barely have three square meals a day. Many are unable to reach their full potential due to malnutrition and poverty. One out of every three women in Ghana are affected by one form of abuse or the other. While many young girls and boys drop out of school due to economic hardship and quest for greener pastures, others simply lack access to basic education. Many women are living with psychological scars as they face discrimination by gender, geographical locations, and devastating and heartbreaking traditions and customs. Lack of appreciation of who they are and what contributions they can offer to societies and generations. But we step in. If you go to most of our LRPs, uh, LRP simply means our uh, development areas, you will find out that we have collaborated with various district assemblies to construct irrigation projects. We have such projects in the Boko West District, in the Tennessee Nabdam District, in the Sisala District, and then in the um, Bolgatanga Districts. If you go there, you can see some of these women who are busy, you know, cultivating some crops and are making extra income. To we reach out and work with excluded and people living in poverty and injustice. We don't impose answers but work closely with communities to find and implement sustainable solutions to liberate the poor and the vulnerable from the shackles of poverty while empowering the lost to claim their rights to education, rights to food and climate change. We are Action Aid Ghana. Action Aid Ghana is an affiliate of the Action Aid Federation, transformed as a branch of Action Aid UK in 2005, and as an associate of Action Aid International, and also stands as a national NGO with functional board of trustees. Action Aid uh, International started in 1972 as uh, a global organization responding basically to people in need and therefore it was then called Action in Distress. This Action in Distress evolved with time, and it, with time it became a global movement, and the global movement is now what we call Action Aid International, which is now a federation. Over the past 24 years, Action Aid Ghana has engaged thousands of individuals and impacted the livelihoods of many more. In 2012, a comprehensive food security and vulnerability analysis identified poverty as a leading cause of food insecurities in Ghana. Meanwhile, Ghana's agricultural sector employs over 41% of the Ghanaian workforce and contribute to over 22% of Ghana's GDP. Yet, poverty is highly endemic among food crop farmers by 46%. Over the years, ActionAid has found it imperative to support activities of food crop farmers to maximize productivity and profit margins. The Northern region has seen over 3,000 smallholder farmers sensitized and educated on climate mitigation and adoption strategies to reduce the impact of climate change. Action Aid Ghana, trained female extension volunteers have also contributed largely to 6,100 women as smallholder farmers access to agricultural extension services. The Community Listeners Club in Upper East Region have also made agricultural extension information readily available in order to improve agronomic practices and farm yields. Action Aid Intervention has also enabled over 3,000 women in parts of the Volta region and northern Ghana to assess secured lands. Yes, you are a good man. 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 You and I say, BBC and no bemoa, you won't be who say, Way are re into ye, for quen be sooner be a yako bomb pay for my young woman boy. Nin and I shin ye do so. Ya won't we ye. Tia shin ye did ye, can't ye, I shin ye, dear bay ye. 
ewo se krom ha de o ma ye ne ha no se sa na o ma ye ne kro bia so dia ahye di fo mo ba so mo ba beboa ama ye ho atoye it was our concern to improve the extension coverage and so we worked with farmers we brought them together to form groups now they are in groups in every community and you can also find commodity groups inside the big farmers groups there is a farmers network in the city and there is a farmers network in time where we actually do the direct community work and the farmers have been taken through how they could get market access. Farmer Networks in Isotifi South has been successful at stopping cocoa purchasing clerks from swindling and cheating cocoa farmers through manipulation of cocoa buying skills. Life becomes highly unbearable for most women and girls who go through sexual abuse, forced marriages, dehumanizing widowhood practices. Uh, young girls of school going age are usually picked or captured and given out to a man as a wife because of a number of reasons. And mostly this happens in deprived rural communities where poverty is seems to be the key challenge, uh, the key issues affecting people at a community level. As Action Aid, we have come up with a number of interventions to curb this situation. The first of it is the, the formation of community-based anti violence teams called popularly known as combat, who have the responsibility to stay in the community and monitor the incidents of marriage by abduction, report the cases to the police on the authority of appropriate authorities for action. We are mobilizing women and girls to participate in decision making at all levels and also mobilizing them to challenge gender-based violence and also to have control over their bodies. And in this direction, we are looking at violence against women and our key campaign team is on the reintegration of the alleged witches. In the northern part of the country, women are accused of witchcraft and banished from their families and friends to six different camps. These camps are located in five districts of the northern region of Ghana. The camps are Kuku Camp in Nanumba South District, Nani Tendang in Yendi Municipality, Gambaga in East Mampurisi District, Boyaxi in Central Gunja, Tendangje and Nabuli Camps in the Gushegu District. These accused persons are usually women in either their mid-40s or old age. The women are mostly beaten, butchered, stoned to death and sometimes maltreated by the accusers, who sometimes are even family members. Many of you would have appreciated that closing down a witch camp wouldn't come a day or overnight. It took a lot of effort, collaborative effort, resource commitment and dedication to the cultural context of the people to be able to work to the point where the Ponyasi witch camp was closed in December. 68-year-old Nyapari Yabila, a victim of a life witchcraft, expressed that to unite with people and the community has brought life back to her. Over the years, Action Aid Ghana has focused on supporting thousands of children through schooling, helping children to understand their rights, according to Action Aid Ghana Charter on promoting right in school. One of the rights in the uh, PRS or the Promoting Rights in School model focuses on the right to adequate school infrastructure. And by adequate school infrastructure, 
it goes a long way to tell us that we need to provide access to schools for all our children. It's the complementary basic education project that we have funding through the Fit and Crown Agent um, focused on out of school children between the ages of 8 and 14. The whole goal is to give informal education to these children out of school and between a nine month period and get them back into the mainstream education of Ghana. Building the capacity of young females with the right consciousness increased awareness of what constitutes violence against girls through series of regional and national girls' camps. School dropouts and children with little or no knowledge of formal education are also supported to go through nine months of informal education in their mother tongue and reintegrated into mainstream schooling. Through the provision of school blocks, early childhood development centers, libraries, furniture and books, a code of conduct for teachers, orientation of newly trained teachers and capacity building of preschool teachers to teach literacy and numeracy has contributed towards the school environment. As a result, net enrollment for primary school levels has increased appreciably. Now, most of these teachers are actually based in the district capitals where there are facilities and for that matter they are not interested in going into the rural communities where their services are actually needed most. So as part of our work at the national level, we can do for the rationalization of teachers and young education services are actually taken on board this and quite recently some resources were allocated to push this agenda. Gender inequality is a common phenomenon in many countries including Ghana, but Action Aid Ghana remains focused on advancing political influence of women and girls. There is a project, um, Young Urban Women Project, uh, being implemented in Ghana. And the target is to mobilize 2,000 young women living in poverty to have more economic independence and also control over their bodies. Uh, this is uh, being implemented in Tamale and Accra. So far we have been able to um, mobilize the 2,000 young women and also constructed two resource centers just to create that space for them to meet twice a month to discuss issues on decent work, on paid care work, sexual and productive health and rights. These 2,000 young women have been organized into 80 groups. We have 40 in Tamale and the same in Accra. I'm Mariam Adam, a young female parliamentarian in Shaw's YFP member. I was recruited when I was in senior high too, and it has builded up my capacity level, my courageous level, and a lot of things. And not just building me up, it also helped me to engage myself in a lot of groups. And currently, I am with Curious Minds. Ashenade thrives to raise recognition for women on paid work, foster redistribution, and subsequently reduction through series of advocacy campaigns. It's unpaid care work of women. And we have recognized this through the pilot project that we have implemented in the Upper East and Modern Region on women's rights to sustainable livelihood. From the pilot, it was revealed that Women spend more than 70% of their time doing work that is not being recognized. That is doing household chores, supporting the family and other things which are actually not being recognized. And through our work and reflections, we saw the need for us to campaign on the reduction, redistribution and recognition of the women and paid care work. I 
and Boko can ask you if you want to do the book, Yapodi and Mandy. And pass here the bar. Now, Papa, I don't mind my idea, mean to me, Kakit and Yammy. Come on, my apache. I can't come the man, say, you would see him. This is why. Why not in the first book? Why? And now, they are mumbling, I'm not being gloomy, but they are never some good one. Come for bar. Come for no bar. A bit quite yet, come to be crying in the and San Mommy Apart, the CNO, and to be Wuha, younger than you was here. It's been 25 years of promoting women's right, education right, and right to climate change in Ghana. But this is just the beginning. We've come very far as an organization because of the support and the collaboration we have received from uh, development partners, from our stakeholders, and from our right holders. Uh, we work together uh, to fashion our development uh, in communities that are poor and deprived. Uh, in the next five years, we hope to extend these operations to other areas in the country where we are not present at this point. At the moment, we work in six regions. We are in Upper West Region, we are in Upper East Region, we are in Northern Region, we are in Bunga uh, we are in Greater Accra and Volta Region. Uh, we hope to, in the next five years, uh, move into other regions like uh, Central Region, we want to move into uh, Western Region uh, because of the mining issues coming up there. We want to ensure that women, women's issues are also expected in mining as well. So we want to extend our operations uh, to all the regions in the next five years uh, and working towards that uh, expansion process. Uh, we've set for ourselves some targets uh, in our country's ready paper that we're working towards for the next five years. And in that, in that uh, paper, we set, uh, we've set four objectives, mission objectives that we want to accomplish. One, we want to make sure that, that we promote climate resilient, sustainable agriculture and also ensure that women have access to land and can also control the land they work on. Uh, number two, we want to advance the political influence of women and ensure that women have a voice, women can speak up uh, where it matters most and also reduce uh, the unpaid care work that women are involved in. And number three, we want to also ensure that we can promote uh, quality education for young boys and young girls uh, so that they can speak up for their rights when it matters most. Uh, and lastly, uh, we want to also promote gender responsiveness uh, in mining and extractive industry. The Action Aid Ghana Board, together with the General Assembly, has consistently accompanied management in the implementation of our different strategies over the years. And we will continue doing that to ensure that Action Aid Ghana remains focused and we are able to achieve our set objectives. It's been 25 long years of hard work. We are not resting until poverty and injustice is eradicated in Ghana. We shall continue to join hands with all like-minded individuals, organizations to ensure that our goals for the next five years are achieved. So please join us. We will rest not until we create a world without poverty and injustice in which every person enjoys their right to a life of dignity. This is Ashinit Ghana and this is our story.